Oh boy, do I feel like an idiot for forgetting to move my camera. <laughs> anyway. Hello everyone, welcome back. It's time for another Kaguya Summer reaction. This time we'll be on to Season 3, Episode 3. This one, Nagisa Kashiwagi wants to kill, Maki Shijo wants to take action, Miyuki Shiragane wants to be believed. I'll be honest with you, I don't remember those names. I'm not sure if they're people we've met before. Nagisa Kashiwagi seems a little familiar, but I'm not sure whether it just sounds like another name that I know from somewhere else. Um, so yeah, anyway, I don't know what that's about. But let's think about what happened last episode. So last episode we had the sort of funny part at the start with um, Osaragi and Shiragane trying to improve the relationship between Ino and Ishigami. Again, using relation, relationship in the meaning of the word just as in how they relate to each other, not necessarily trying to, you know, matchmake them or anything. Well, honestly, I don't know what um, Osaragi's goal is there, but certainly Shiragane is probably more interested in just having two council members be able to function in the same room as each other without, <laughs> you know, always, you know. With all, without always fighting or, you know, pointedly ignoring each other and all that sort of stuff. Um, so that was pretty funny. The different... You know, now I think about it, <laughs> some of the ideas that Shirogane had come up with to try to get them to improve how they interact definitely were... definitely seemed a little bit more uh, intimate than, you know, typical just trying to, you know bond or break down barriers type type deal but anyway i i don't think that was his intent it's just he as he said he just wasn't very good at thinking of these sorts of ideas but that was funny and also gave us the well several hilarious images but particularly the one where they were doing the ear cleaning and um <laughs> because they refused actually to have any you know contact with each other they came up with the situation of Ino sort of draping herself over a couch and balancing on like a desk while Ishigami carefully distanced from her <laughs> went up to clean her ears. Anyway, that was ridiculous. I guess the idea of the princess carry while he's actually just carrying her with ropes <laughs> was also kind of um, amusing. But then we had the next two parts which were focused on Shirogane who'd been invited to go on a karaoke thing which was actually, you know, a bit of a mixer, which he didn't know. And Shinomiya ended up sending Hayasaka to try to, you know, interrupt him and prevent, you know, any anything from happening. Although I doubt it would have, but, you know, that's how it is. Um, and this was basically like a, a follow-on from uh, Season 2 episode, again, where Shinomiya had sort of once said to Hayasaka, oh, you know, why don't you go seduce him? I bet you won't. Um, and then, yeah, this one sort of continued with that as Hayasaka went. We got to see a side of Hayasaka where, you know, she expressed sort of her irritation. Um, both, I guess, with Shinomiya. You know, she feels like, oh, you know, why don't, why don't you just do these things? Because I believe that um, Hayasaka is there, you know, to you know, to assist her in various ways, but I don't know whether it necessarily extends to this. This feels more like it's Hayasaka does it because she wants to help and because she's a friend. You know, this is kind of very friend slash big sister type type deal. But yeah, this also stung Hayasaka's pride a little bit, so she did try to... I mean, I think some of it was, you know, just to get back at Shinomiya and, you know, another part of her taking Shirogane, you know, and just... Uh, the two of them to go off do karaoke in a different room was also just part of her pride just you know well you know can i but then we ended up getting to see some very you know funny images of shinomiya just complete panicking it's always funny to see that like such a brilliant person but absolutely undone by her own brain <laughs> and emotions um very relatable also very funny and we also got to see that Shirogane is apparently terrible at rapping, which 
both defeated Hayasaka and also ended up indirectly giving Chika PTSD, even though she almost didn't encounter Shiragane at all that episode. Whew. So I like, you know, again, the show is one where things just, things feel like they're kind of staying the same, but there is like a general progression. Everything is being pushed forward, but they still manage to keep this sense that, you know, nothing's changing too much until you realize that actually, no, they've been seeding in, you know, character development and, you know, these different sort of plot threads and things all, all along. So that's fun. So anyway, that's enough babble. Time to start episode three. Just a reminder that these are full-length timer-based reactions, which means I won't be showing much of the picture at all, and basically all of the sound will be cut out. I'll be watching on Crunchyroll. You can watch along there or wherever you've got your own legitimate copy as well. Um, I'll do a countdown, and there'll be a timer, and hopefully you'll be able to keep yourself in sync. So here we go. This is Kaguya-sama Season 3, Episode 3. And I'll be starting in three, two, one, now. Opes like this need a uh, karaoke esque set of lyrics, maybe even a bouncy ball at the bottom. <laughs> How many of these characters do we already know? This is a very pretty opening, I think. And I like these effects here where Shinomi is running and you've got all of these different um like different scenes. I want I want I want It was clear enough before, but I forgot to put the C <laughs> the captions on. <laughs> Just dining with a member of the opposite sex counts. <laughs> of course, you know, would know that off the top of her head. This interaction is actually kind of fun. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. 
Wow, because I trusted him, I hired a private detect. Oh my god. Even more, he was probably going because you told him that you were interested. Mm, I mean, okay, I don't know about that one, man. See? Panic Shinomi is cute. Albeit slightly disturbing. Boy, you know, but this is a great mix to this interaction. <laughs> Such exaggerated tiptoeing. <laughs> oh no. Well, she is. Uh, I mean, you did hire a private detective. You should probably work that out. Recommended the lame one on purpose. Ah, so this is Maki Shijo. We have a name. Now I'm just going to go off and cry. Uh. Lyrics. <laughs> what the hell? What an attitude.
Oh boy. I was gonna say maybe she is actually really <laughs> similar. She got me, it's so funny. And he gets really worked up. Let me go for six months, right? That's what they said. That's what the the heart necklace was for. Oh, that's so quick. I love how these these threads just keep going. These story threads. She's so cheeky. <laughs> yep, enjoy.
just talking about it, someone makes my heart much lighter. <clears throat> yeah, I'm glad that we got a name now. There's a lot of thunder around here. I hope that's not getting picked up on the mic. The 10 yen coin game. Ah, uh, okay. So it's like a hidden... No cheating, says Chico. if you admit to being in love right now. <laughs> now their brains are going to be all heads of deep down you hate me <laughs> Tori Take <laughs> I love the chain the the change in style just there. They're both very insecure. <laughs> yep. Oh, that was wholesome, a bit. Wow. Sasuga Shinomiya.
Of course, Junamiya would be doing that sort of thing. Everyone. Oh, one. <laughs> what an image. <laughs> Everyone's been messing with it. She really needs to say something. But I am glad that. I am glad that um, Shiragane actually said that it was important for him to sort of get that out. This is a great ending. The second season ending was, I found that one to be quite touching, especially when I noticed that they, that it actually changed partway through. But it also felt like a little bit more simplistic, somehow. What an... Shit, I forgot to move my... Oh boy, do I feel like an idiot for forgetting to move my camera. <laughs> anyway, so that was episode three. That was pretty fun. It so effortlessly moved from, you know, transition from sort of episode two 
like I was saying before, it manages to do this thing where it's sort of episodic, like, you know, each thing is almost, you know, standalone sort of humor, while also managing to maintain this thread of continuity. And that's, <clears throat> and I think that's really fun. But also it manages to pull things from, you know, like quite far back as well. So we've had this relationship or this other sort of relationship between uh, Kashiwagi Nagisa, who was the girl who first came to ask, and her boyfriend also did the same with Shiragane, and whose relationship seems to be, you know, progressing, you know, along at the side, you know, with its own troubles, obviously, because otherwise they wouldn't be coming and asking for advice. But, you know, things are, things are happening. And, you know, that's, that's quite fun to see these supporting characters and the way that they bounce off. Um, we can sort of see the way that the characters who they are asking the advice of get sort of reflected in them. And this time, you know, we had the extra, you know, that sort of advice asking and giving has been evolving in its own way as well. You know, for example, we ended up getting Ishigami in to provide advice before, and then this time we had Ino, who was there present this time when um, when Kashiwagi was, you know, seeking advice or a discussion with Shinomiya there. And then later we had, well, just a different one in that it was Shiragane and Ishigami, but this time they were talking to um, Shijo, who we now know is the name for the girl who has been uh, jealously following around that couple. At least I don't think we've had a name before this. Tell me if we have, please. Although admittedly in this case it wasn't because she actually came for advice, but because she <laughs> just like, I don't know, passed out or just lay down out of quiet despair until Shiragane went and accidentally stepped on her while they were walking. This show, this show. Yes, yeah, so I mean, the first part was, you know, fun. We saw, yeah, I mean, straight away that sort of tied back to the karaoke thing, where you could still see that Shinomiya was, you know, a bit concerned about what had happened and whether that, you know, sh that should mean anything or whether she should, you know. And of course, you had Shinomiya giving, you know, advice which basically matched that of someone who was very jealous. Um, up to the point of the karaoke where suddenly Shinomiya wanted nothing more than confirmation that surely karaoke means nothing. Just for her, just for her own sanity in that case. And having Ino in there was just a really fun, you know, mixture by having Shinomiya agreeing so, so strongly with most of, you know, Kashiwagi's um, suspicions and everything. While well, Ino's just there being very confused, like, this isn't normal, right? <laughs> to be, you know, this jealous and, um, or to, you know, to be reading this much into these things. Knew how to unlock his phone, um, hired a private detective. And then all for not, you know, see, um, as expected that the guy who we, we don't have a name for him yet, do we? He's still just the boyfriend, I guess. Um, anyway, yeah, so it turns out he was, um, you know, sort of as it started sounding like, because she'd said that she was interested in this particular store, he ended up, you know, trying to go find, you know, someone else, in this case a mutual friend, to try to get advice, you know, oh, you know what to get. And then we find out that <laughs> Shido actually tried to make him pick the lamest one to sabotage him, and it turns out, well, backfired because, well, she loved it. Uh, Kashiwagi loved it. And then, and then we got to learn about Shido, who it turns out isn't just some random stalker. She is, in fact, a Shinomiya breed stalker, <laughs> um, which explains a lot, honestly. So we see that there are many things that are similar between her and Shinomiya, although she does do that sort of, um, although she is very cheeky in the way that, you know, someone, 
in the only way that someone of, you know, quote unquote, lower rank can do. But yeah, turns out maybe they're all kind of crazy. But she is also like a kind of different sort of crazy, I think. And that was very funny to see, um, just the interaction and the way that the the two boys just kept like getting almost whiplash from the way that Shijo just kept flicking back and forth between, you know, innocent and cute, um you know, distraught to suddenly just completely, you know, pompous <laughs> and just, you know, absolutely full of herself. Um, that was that was incredible. Yeah, so that's that's a fun supporting character that I'll be happy to see more of, I think. And then the last part ended up being fun, you know, again going through with this thread of Shinomiya being concerned about, you know, what you know, these group dates and all that sort of thing, Chika turning into a bit of fun, but also trying to, you know, manipulate the game to learn things as well. So yep, there we go, we've still got Chica love detective and still somehow clueless about this whole this whole thing. And yeah, we got to see, you know, a few different things. We got to see Ishigami and Ino both kind of you know, insecure, obviously. In some ways they're, you know, really out there and like in your face. I gotta say it's like really fun seeing Ishigami when he's really just, you know, letting his words, you know, his thoughts be known, that's, you know, that's quite fun. You know, it's very different from when we first met him in season one, and he's, you know, his primary line was just, I'm going home because I want to die. <laughs> um, you know, now he's, you know, really developed as a character, and that's fun to see. But yeah, you know, he's still insecure. He's, I guess he's concerned about people, like, really hating him. Shame that someone still did, you know, um, say that yes, they hate him deep down, but maybe they've just got to keep working on that. Um, but you know, the relief that Ishigami felt were, I guess, despite how they're treating him, he must have thought, oh my god, everyone actually hates me, but I'm still here just because I'm, you know, useful, maybe. And you know, despite having been asked in here, you know, requested to join, still, you know, being concerned that, you know, everyone actually just didn't like her. So again, you know, hopefully she can build up her own self-confidence. As Ishigami said, you know, she seems like she'd be a real easy mark. Um, just sort of the, the the amount that she relishes that sort of praise. But it was good for her to feel that and for that to sort of come out in this, through this, um, through this game. Hopefully that she can accept that, you know, yes, the rest of the council does. They do like her and think that she's useful. And of course, this wouldn't be, you know, Love is War without um, shenanigans being pulled, particularly by Shinami and Shiragane both trying to, you know, galaxy brain move any situation. And in this case, it turns out that they both, you know, sort of countered e each other in this case. And then that just ended with... um. <laughs> The, that ended with the discovery that, you know, there were several people all trying to, who had all come to the conclusion that they might be able to draw, you know, some information by keeping observation of the coins um, and trying to get some extra information out of that. But what a group. They are all very well suited to each other, I think. This council deserves each other in the best way, <laughs> in the best way possible. Yeah, and you know, a much sort of slower, like sweeter kind of moment at the end, as um, Shirogane tried to, you know, confront the fact directly, albeit facing away from Shinomiya. <laughs> but you know, he he directly tried to address the subject um, rather than just avoiding it or anything like that. Um, and of course we wouldn't expect Shinomiya to <clears throat> to admit it so easily, but it was it was nice to see how how much his choosing to you know speak to her like that managed to calm her. 
you know, it's it's silly how, but so realistic how how paranoid she is, and you know, concerned that he doesn't like her, despite the way that he treats her. It reminds me of the election episode in um season two, where you know. She was like, oh, he he treats everyone, you know, so nice. You know, I'm not anything special. And then later, you know, Hayasaka, like, you know, hiding outside of the window, sort of says, no. You know, he definitely does treat you special. And, um, you know, Shinomiya can't see that. Anyway, that's the third episode down. I'm gonna... I'm gonna move over here. <laughs> and then just so I can take a picture <laughs> just to fabricate a thumbnail because I was an idiot and forgot to oh my god I forgot to move my camera I feel so dumb <sighs> anyway that's episode 3 of Kaguya Summer another great episode and I am looking forward to the next one but until then leave a comment about what you thought about the episode Drop a like if you like this reaction, and I will see you next time.